Hi everyone, I'm really excited to share with you some things that I have learned about David Carson. He is one of the most influential graphic designers of the 20th century, most notably in the 1990s. His work is very experimental and goes beyond the confines of typical typography and image layout. One of my favorite quotes by Carson that I think goes well to start off this presentation is, as we get more technically driven, the importance of people become more than it's ever been before. You have to utilize who you are in your work. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can pull from your background, from your parents, your upbringing, your whole life experience. I think this is a great jumping off point to give you some background on David Carson. David Carson was born in Corpus Christi, Texas in 1954 and is not a graphic designer who has a traditional design education. It is far from it. He does not hold a formalized degree in the field. He was actually a surfer, and not just any surfer. He was ranked eighth in the world in the late 1970s. He also graduated from San Diego State University with a degree in sociology in 1977. He went from there to teach at a private school in Oregon as a generals teacher for middle and high school students. So as you can see, it is very atypical of what most designers, especially world-renowned designers, have as their start. The story on how he got involved in graphic design is one of my favorites. At the age of 26, as he was working at the school, he received a flyer in the mail that was intended for his students. It was a pamphlet for a two-week summer graphic design program at the University of Arizona. Carson went, Carson went, and from there, was inspired to attend classes at a few different schools prior to interning at Surfer Magazine. He, might, he made his final leap into the design world after attending a summer institute in Switzerland led by Hans Rudolf Lutz. Carson attributes Lutz as a uh, substantial influence on him and helped him push the boundaries of experimentation. The reason I felt it was so important to give this background in such detail is Carson attributes uh, from surfing to sociology as huge influences in how he creates his work. Looking at the image on screen, this is a resume that David Carson created in 1995. And if you have not seen his work before, it is a good introduction into the nonconformist layout and type selection. It has good balance, even with the unconventional layout. And what I like most about it is the playful mood with the old driver's license and other photos throughout the piece. Additionally, it has a very cut out feeling as almost they are pasted on the page, which is a very common effect in Carson's work, and you will see throughout the presentation. <clears throat> I want to now speak about David Carson's work and what influences it. Most notably, Carson believes in the influence of emotional design. He states, I'm a big believer in the emotion of design and the message that's sent before somebody begins to read, before they get the rest of the information. What is the emotional response they get to the product, to the story, to the painting, whatever it is? Throughout this presentation, take a look at his pieces, and you will see that none of them make the text the most visible element. The text is there as a brushstroke on the page to give the image more depth. <clears throat> Even though I couldn't find any literature to back up this theory, I see some interesting similarities between Carson's work and Alexei Brodovich's most more avant-garde layouts and using the type more as texture than content. There is also a cutout feeling in Brodovich's designs, which is present in Carson's designs as well. As Carson doesn't have formalized design education, he was not educated of the design eras preceding him, and it makes him the poster child, in a sense, for the anti-conformist postmodern design movement of the late 1980s and early 90s. As I mentioned previously, Carson attributes a lot of his early influence to Hans Rudolf Lutz, who he studied with in Switzerland. Lutz 
was a child of the Swiss modern movement completely opposite to Carson, but was very experimental with type, which is what he encouraged David to take part in. David Carson also took a lot of influence from the fanzines of the anti-establishment punk rock 1970s. One of his first part-time jobs as a designer was at a skateboard-centric fanzine called Trans World Skateboarding. This style is also seen as heavily influencing his creative direction at the magazine Ray Gun, which I will discuss in more detail shortly. Lastly, I wanted to mention Carson, Carson attributing a lot of his design point of view to intuition and the importance of it. He goes on to say that most design schools discount it as a skill because it's something it isn't something easily taught. But he alludes to the fact that if you don't have a strong sense of dis- a strong sense of intuition in your designs, you should, should, you should consider finding another profession. As it is not something that can be easily taught, Carson attributes most of his influence to characteristics that are beyond things that can be learned. Many of his critics, um, and he has several, believe his approach is unorthodox and his flippant um, way of approaching type and design in general and is also has too much personal attributes um, incorporated into the design. Looking to the image on screen, the top left is a layout Carson did in 2013, so very recently, and you can see that the text is there to support the larger image and evoke the emotion of the article. The bottom right image is of the surfer's path cover Carson did And if you know anything about the aesthetics of the 1990s grunge movement, you can see how the nonconformist layout and hand lettering is the voice of that generation. Now looking at his most famous work as the founding art director of Raygun, an experimental music magazine first published in 1992. David Carson's objective for the spreads were to have people listen to the music while viewing the magazine and try to interpret the music and design together. Even though Carson was only with the magazine for a few years and the magazine ended in 1998, his influence is notable and is a cult publication to this day. Reagan is known as before its time not only with its designs but also showcasing musicians such as Bjork, Radiohead, Flaming Lips, and many more before their popularity. If you look at the image above in the top right um, is the cover of Reagan with Andy Warhol and, ex- and an experimental text layout, which is, was the calling card of the magazine. In the bottom left is a layout from the magazine. As you can potentially see, the text is set in dingbats. Carson thought the actual article was boring, so he changed it, changed it to the unreadable font to give the story more interest. I think this example embodies what Raygun was all about and the importance of making a visual story rather than one with text. David Carson style David Carson style filtered into the mainstream and he has done campaigns for Microsoft, Pepsi, Levi, and Nike, to name just a few. There are a few examples pictured above, and as you can see, Carson's style is present throughout. As the text is not easily read, it is secondary to developing a strong emotional response. Carson has also collaborated on films and several books, most notably the book The End of Print, pictured above which is the highest sold graphic design book of all time. The book is the history of his career and influences with his signature style throughout. Carson is still a major force in the the design community, continuing continuing to do advertising work, and this year he was named Apple's 30 most influential designers in the past 30 years. He was one of only two graphic designers on that list. He was also awarded the AIGA Medal of Excellence this year, along with many accolades throughout his career. 
As I wrap up this presentation on David Carson, I'm struck by a quote he gave in a 20, 2007 interview regarding how he maintains work-life balance. He replied, I've always felt I make my living from my hobby, so I'm lucky in that respect. As Marshall McLuhan said, if you're totally involved in something, it is no longer work. It is play or leisure. As Carson was many things before a graphic designer, it is inspiring to hear that searching for the right career can lead you to the profession you should be part of. As I suspect many of us are in similar positions taking this continuing education class in the process of making a career change. I hope hearing a bit more about David Carson has given a little more insight, not only into the style, his style and influence, but also it doesn't matter when you start going for your goals, just start them. Thank you for listening, and the next page will follow with some source information if you're interested.